will be. Now, Greg, Paul Williams is just coming here to discuss what he's going to do on the show, nothing else. In 1976, the creators of the original Brady's universe decided to bring back the beloved family in a variety show format. The casting process was crucial to capture the essence of the original characters while infusing new energy for this unique production. For the iconic roles, they sought actors who could convincingly portray the parents, Mike and Carol Brady. Robert Reed, known for his work on Broadway and television, returned to play Mike after forming a strong bond with his castmates during the initial series. Similarly, Florence Henderson, already established as a singer and actress, stepped back into her role as Carol. Their familiarity with the characters facilitated a smooth transition. To find young talents to play the six children, extensive searches were conducted across the country. Barry Williams, Maureen McCormick, Christopher Knight, Eve Plum, Mike Lookinland, and Susan Olsen had all appeared in the original sitcom, but only some would return for the variety hour. For instance, Gary Reichel replaced Eve Plum as Jan due to contract disputes, earning her the nickname Fake Jan among fans. Auditions consisted of singing, dancing, and acting assessments, allowing producers to gauge versatility, vital for a variety show. Additionally, chemistry tests helped determine compatibility between existing and new cast members since capturing familial bonds authentically proved essential to engaging viewers further. A notable moment unfolded when producer Sid Croft witnessed Rip Taylor's outrageous antics during taping, deeming him perfect for the eccentric recurring character Uncle Arthur. His over-the-top style contrasted beautifully with the wholesome image of the Brady clan, providing comic relief throughout the series. Ultimately, careful consideration went into selecting every performer involved in the project, ensuring continuity with the original Brady's, yet offering fresh perspectives through diverse talents joining the fold. <laughs> this little thing has a black belt. Oh, no! <laughs> a black, it's so depressing, it's not you, you would... The director of the 1976 TV series approached the project with a clear vision. They aimed to create a variety show that showcased the talents of the Brady Bunch cast, while also incorporating musical performances and comedy sketches. The director drew inspiration from classic variety shows of the past, such as The Ed Sullivan Show and The Sunny and Cher Comedy Hour. The director's style was characterized by a fast-paced, energetic approach to storytelling. They worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that each episode was tightly scripted and well-rehearsed. The director also encouraged improvisation and collaboration, which helped to create a warm and friendly atmosphere on set. One of the key challenges of the series was finding ways to incorporate the musical performances into the storyline. The director's solution was to create sketches that were built around the songs, rather than simply inserting the music into the show as an afterthought. This approach helped to create a more cohesive and engaging viewing experience. The director also worked closely with the show's choreographers and musical directors to ensure that the performances were visually and orally stunning. They were known for their attention to detail and would often spend hours tweaking small elements of a performance to get them just right. Despite the challenges of working with a large cast and a complex format, the director remained focused and dedicated throughout the production. Their hard work paid off, and the series was well received by audiences and critics alike. In the end, the director's vision for the show was realized through their collaborative approach, attention to detail, and commitment to creating a high-quality viewing experience. The series remains a beloved piece of television history and continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. You want to improve it? All right. Holy the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a TV series that first aired in 1976, is a spin-off of the original Brady Bunch show. This series, which featured the same cast members, was a variety show that included singing, dancing, and comedy sketches. Despite its short run of only 10 episodes, it has remained an enduring symbol of the television industry. Its unique blend of family-friendly entertainment and the novelty of seeing the Brady family in a different format contributed to its lasting appeal. Many fans of the show have fond memories of watching it when it first aired. Perhaps you remember gathering around the TV with your family to watch the Bradys sing and dance, or maybe you were drawn to the show's colorful costumes and sets. Whatever your reason for tuning in, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour likely holds a special place in your heart. But there are also some surprising and even sad facts about the show that you may not know. For instance, did you know that some of the cast members were less than thrilled about doing a variety show? Or that the show faced stiff competition from other popular variety shows of the time? 
And while the show was meant to be a fun and lighthearted departure from the original series, it was not without its challenges. So, what is it about the Brady Bunch Variety Hour that has made it an enduring symbol of the television industry? Is it the catchy music, the hilarious sketches, or the heartwarming family moments? Whatever the reason, there's no denying the show's lasting impact. Do you have a cherished memory associated with the Brady Bunch Variety Hour? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether you remember the show's upbeat energy or its occasional missteps, your memories are an important part of its legacy. Important to tell you both. <laughs> now, before you bought this house, I rented it to... The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a 1976 TV series, was a spin-off of the original Brady's show. The production faced several challenges, especially in terms of set design and logistics. The show's format required a versatile set, capable of accommodating both scripted segments and musical performances. Designers opted for a flexible stage layout, featuring a main living room area and a secondary performance stage. This setup allowed for seamless transitions between the show's skits and musical numbers. The set was designed to resemble the iconic Brady Bunch house, but with added features to facilitate variety show elements. In terms of locations, the entire series was filmed on a soundstage in Hollywood, California. This choice eliminated the need for location scouting and permits, but presented its own set of logistical challenges. Coordinating the cast, crew, and equipment within the confined space of a soundstage required careful planning and execution. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of chroma key technology for musical performances. This allowed the singers to perform in front of virtual backgrounds, adding a dynamic visual element to the show. Despite the logistical challenges, the production team managed to create a captivating and entertaining show that resonated with audiences. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour stands as a testament to the versatility of the Brady's franchise and the innovative techniques employed during its production. Look at your poor mama taking in the washing. Here, where are these? The television series, often referred to as The Show, was a spin-off of the popular program The Brady Bunch. Airing in 1976, it brought a new twist to the original sitcom by incorporating variety elements. The cast members, including Florence Henderson, Robert Reed, and their on-screen children, took on roles beyond their usual characters. They sang, danced, and performed skits, providing a unique blend of comedy and music. While some critics appreciated the innovative approach, others found it jarring compared to the original show's wholesome family vibe. Despite the mixed reviews, the series remains a notable attempt to diversify the content of traditional sitcoms. Florence Henderson, born in 1934, demonstrated her versatility as both an actress and singer in the series. She had already built a solid career before joining the show, appearing in numerous Broadway productions and hosting her own morning talk show. Her performance in the series further highlighted her talent and dedication. Similarly, Robert Reed, born in 1932, showcased his acting skills in various drama series and films prior to his role in The Brady Bunch and its subsequent Variety Hour. His portrayal of the father figure in the Brady's blended family earned him recognition and love from audiences. Although the show received mixed reactions, it provided an opportunity for the cast members to step outside their comfort zones and display their diverse talents. Today, it serves as a reminder of the entertainment industry's continuous evolution and willingness to experiment with different formats. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a 1976 TV series, featured a unique blend of comedy sketches, musical performances, and variety acts. A significant aspect of the show was its lively and upbeat musical score, which complemented the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. The composers and musicians involved in creating the show's music were experienced professionals who understood the importance of using music to enhance the viewer's experience. They carefully selected each song to fit the theme and mood of the scene, resulting in a cohesive and engaging soundtrack. One of the show's composers, John Baylor, explained that the music was intended to be bright, cheerful, and upbeat to match the show's positive tone. He and his team used a variety of instruments, including keyboards, guitars, and drums, to create a full and dynamic sound. In addition to the upbeat music, the show also featured several ballads and slower songs that added depth and emotion to the narrative. These songs were often performed by the show's cast members, who were all talented singers in their own right. 
The Brady Bunch Variety Hour soundtrack was an essential part of the show's success, providing a lively and engaging backdrop to the comedy sketches and variety acts. The composers and musicians involved in creating the music were skilled professionals who understood the importance of using music to enhance the viewer's experience. Their hard work and dedication resulted in a memorable and enduring soundtrack that continues to be enjoyed by fans of the show today. Don't worry, he'll be back. In the 1976 television series, Jerry Rachel, who played the role of John, developed a significant crush on her on-screen sibling, Christopher Knight, who portrayed Peter. Meanwhile, Mike Lookinlin, who played Bobby, was portrayed by his own son, Scott Lookinlin, in the 2000 film Growing Up Brady. Robert Reed, who played the role of Mike Brady, had a Shakespearean background. He was part of an off-Broadway company called The Shakespeare Rights, where he took on roles in Romeo and Juliet and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Towards the end of his life, he shared his expertise by teaching a course in Shakespearean acting at UCLA. Let me guess. They've hijacked the house and we're headed for Cuba. <laughs> the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a 1976 TV series, had its share of iconic scenes that left a lasting impression on the audience. One such moment is the opening sequence where the Bradys perform a lively musical number, showcasing the family's unity and enthusiasm. The vibrant colors and upbeat tune create an atmosphere of joy and excitement, drawing the viewer into the show's world. In an interview, Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady, praised the opening sequence for its energy and the opportunity it provided for the cast to sing and dance together. The choreography, directed by the renowned Grover Dale, highlights the actors' versatility and their ability to work together as a team. Another memorable scene is the family's medley of classic TV theme songs, where they pay tribute to popular shows of the past. This segment demonstrates the film's self-awareness and its ability to poke fun at itself, while also appealing to the nostalgia of its audience. The show's cinematography is also worth noting, with its bright, warm lighting and colorful sets. These elements contribute to the overall cheerful atmosphere of the series, making it a pleasant escape for viewers. Despite the series' short run, its impact on popular culture is undeniable. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour has become a cult classic, inspiring numerous parodies and tributes in the years since its initial airing. The show's unique blend of music, comedy, and family values continues to resonate with audiences today. In a behind-the-scenes interview, producer Sid Croft highlighted the importance of maintaining the show's balance between humor and heart. He emphasized the need to create a product that would appeal to both children and adults, allowing the series to transcend generational boundaries. In conclusion, the iconic scenes from the Brady Bunch Variety Hour are a testament to the show's enduring appeal. Through its memorable musical numbers, clever medleys, and strong sense of family, the series has left a lasting mark on the world of television. Farrah does all the hitting in my family. Oh, oh hit him, Farrah! Oh. In the mid-1970s, a variety show based on the beloved sitcom The Brady Bunch emerged. Notably, Ann B. Davis, who played housekeeper Alice in the original series, praised Eve Plum, who portrayed Jan Brady, as the most talented child actor among the cast. However, Plum struggled to achieve the same level of success in her adult acting career, which saddened Davis. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a 1976 TV series, brought a fresh twist to the original Brady Bunch show by incorporating musical numbers and comedy sketches. The film resonated with audiences due to its lively and entertaining format, providing a nostalgic trip down memory lane for fans of the original series. The show featured the same beloved characters, now performing in a variety format, which allowed for a wider range of creative expression. This new direction proved popular, as viewers enjoyed seeing their favorite characters in a different light. The series also attracted a broader audience, including those who may not have been fans of the original show. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour influenced pop culture in various ways. The show's success led to a resurgence of interest in the original Brady Bunch series, as well as other family-oriented programming. Additionally, the series showcased the talents of its cast members, some of whom went on to have successful careers in music and television. The show touched on relevant social themes, such as family values and teamwork. 
The characters often work together to solve problems and support one another, which reinforce the importance of unity and cooperation. Furthermore, the series featured guest stars from various backgrounds, promoting diversity and inclusivity. In summary, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on family values and diversity. The show's unique format and beloved characters continue to captivate viewers, making it a memorable part of television history. If it wasn't for Dad, there wouldn't be any Brady Bunch Hour. How come? Because if it wasn't for Dad, there wouldn't... Did you know that Paul Williams, a talented singer and songwriter, initially auditioned for a role on The Monkees before finding his place in the entertainment industry elsewhere? Meanwhile, Lee Majors made history by starring in two television series simultaneously, Owen Marshall, counselor at law, and The Six Million Dollar Man. In other news, Tina Turner, a legendary singer, wore a stunning green taffeta and black silk tulle Giorgio Armani dress adorned with Swarovski crystals for her marriage to Irwin. The event took place at their Swiss estate, Chateau Algonquin, and was attended by notable figures such as Oprah Winfrey, Gail King, Brian Adams, David Bowie, Said, and Eros Ramazzotti. During the celebration, Brian Adams performed a duet with Tina on the rock song, It's Only Love. Let's drink to our new house. To us. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, which debuted in 1976 as a spin-off of the original Brady sitcom, received mixed reviews from critics and audiences alike. Some praised the show's efforts to bring the beloved TV family into a variety format, while others criticized it for straying too far from the source material. Critics pointed out the lack of chemistry between the actors, who seemed uncomfortable in their new roles as singers and dancers. Robert Lloyd of the Los Angeles Times noted that the Bradys were never a particularly expressive or athletic bunch, and none of them seem entirely comfortable in the variety setting. However, he also commended the show's commitment to its concept, writing that it goes all in on the idea. Despite the criticism, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour did have some supporters. In his review for The New Yorker, Pauline Kael called it a funny, satirical show, praising the cast's comedic timing and the writer's ability to poke fun at themselves. She wrote, They don't take themselves seriously. They make you laugh. As for audience reactions, ratings for the show were modest at best. While it drew decent numbers initially, viewership quickly declined, leading to its cancellation after just six episodes. Fans of the original Brady's expressed disappointment with the new format, feeling that it failed to capture the charm and warmth of the original series. Interestingly, despite the tepid response, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour did receive one award nomination. At the 34th Primetime Emmy Awards, Florence Henderson was nominated for Outstanding Individual Performance in a Variety or Music Program for her role as Carol Brady. Although she didn't win, the nomination served as a testament to her continued popularity and dedication to the character she had played for over half a decade. Ultimately, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour remains an intriguing footnote in television history. For those involved, the experience likely provided valuable lessons in adapting classic properties for modern audiences. While the show may not have resonated with viewers or critics during its initial run, its legacy serves as a reminder of the risks and rewards inherent in reviving cherished franchises. In 1976, a TV series featuring a blended family captured audiences' hearts. While it only lasted for one season, it left a lasting impact on popular culture. The show's cast included Ann B. Davis, who was no stranger to the spotlight, being the daughter of an electrical engineer and an amateur actress. The series was initially canceled, but there were plans for it to return as a series of specials throughout the following season. Unfortunately, this never came to fruition. Despite its short run, the show had a significant influence on its viewers and the entertainment industry. Interestingly, one of the show's cast members, Tina Turner, had a particular fondness for the film The Road Warrior, which was released in 1981. She was thrilled to be cast as anti-entity in the sequel, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, in 1985. The legacy of this TV series continues to resonate with audiences today, and its impact can still be felt in the entertainment industry. Despite its short run, the show left an indelible mark on popular culture and remains a beloved classic. Favorite show? <laughs> Did you hear what Paul Williams said to my wife? Told her he loved her? My care. Filming the Brady Bunch Variety Hour was an adventure filled with laughter and challenges. Producers aimed to create a unique blend of the original sitcom 
and variety show elements, which led to some memorable moments. The cast, mostly known for their scripted roles, had to adapt to singing and dancing. Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady, revealed her extensive background in musical theater, often helping her co-stars with their performances. Robert Reed, the father figure Mike Brady, had reservations about the show's direction. Known for his dramatic roles, he found it difficult to embrace the variety format. Despite this, he remained professional and committed to the project. Maureen McCormick, who portrayed eldest sister Marcia, faced personal struggles during filming. She was open about her battle with anxiety and stage fright, which made her variety show performances even more courageous. The show also featured numerous guest stars, including Rip Taylor, who brought his energetic personality and comedic timing to the set. His appearances added an extra layer of fun and excitement to the variety hour. Behind the scenes, the crew worked tirelessly to create visually stunning sets and costumes. Choreographers developed lively dance numbers, while music directors coached the cast in their vocal performances. Despite the challenges, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour provided a unique opportunity for the cast and crew to grow and learn from one another. The resulting show was a testament to their dedication and creativity. Oh, you're both wrong. Dad's talking about love. What do you think I'm talking about? <laughs> In January 2001, Barry Williams, a cast member of the TV series, was fined 50000 by Actors' Equity for appearing in a non-equity tour of The Sound of Music. This fine was believed to be the largest ever imposed by the union. Another notable figure associated with the show is Vincent Price, who hosted BBC Radio's The Price of Fear from 1973 to 1975 and again in 1983. Additionally, Robert Hages, before starting his acting career in New York City, earned a bachelor's degree in speech, theater, and dance from Glassboro State College in Glassboro, New Jersey. These are just a few interesting facts about the TV series. <laughs> the Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a 1976 TV series, holds a unique place in film history. As a spin-off of the original Brady Bunch show, it brought a fresh twist to the beloved family incorporating musical numbers and variety acts. This shift in format was influential, inspiring future productions to experiment with similar blends of narrative and variety show elements. The series also provided a platform for its cast to showcase their diverse talents. The Brady children, in particular, demonstrated their singing and dancing abilities, which added to the show's appeal. This emphasis on versatility in acting roles became more common in later productions, with many shows favoring multi-talented performers. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, in its own right, sparked a number of imitations and adaptations. It served as a model for other variety shows of the era and influenced the development of future family-oriented productions. The show's lighthearted approach and focus on family values resonated with audiences, leaving a lasting impact on the television landscape. In essence, the 1976 TV series, through its innovative format and talented cast, left an indelible mark on film history. Its influence can be seen in the variety of shows that followed, making it a significant milestone in the evolution of television. Gift flowers. This, by the way, is a daisy. Yeah, and this is a chrysanthemum. In 2019, a familiar face from the 1976 TV series made waves on The Masked Singer. Competing as the Peacock, this former cast member impressed audiences and judges alike. Despite tough competition, including Gladys Knight, the Peacock made it to the finale, ultimately finishing in second place behind T-Pain. The standout moment of the Peacock's journey was a captivating performance of The Greatest Show, from The Greatest Showman, hailed as one of the best in the show's history. Another notable connection to the show comes from Bill Hudson, who, alongside his brothers, provided backing vocals for David Cassidy on two of his LPs. Home is where the heart is, and the higher they climb. This collaboration added an extra layer of talent to the music created during that time. Lastly, Lee Majors, a cast member in the show, revealed his positive working relationship with Barbara Stanwyck on the popular series The Big Valley in 1965. Their bond undoubtedly contributed to the success and chemistry of their on-screen performances. These connections and behind-the-scenes stories offer a glimpse into the rich history and talent associated with the TV series. Robert Reed, known for his role in the popular television series, had a unique epitaph on his tombstone, a line from William Shakespeare's Hamlet, 
which reads Good Night, Sweet Prince. The series also featured a guest appearance from Vincent Price, who was friends with the hard rock band Deep Purple. The band later dedicated a song to him, titled Vincent Price, released in 2013. Moreover, the show's cast included Farrah Fawcett, who, along with her Charlie's Angels co-stars, considered it an honor when Time magazine wanted to put them on their cover. However, when the producers wanted them to give up their lunch hour for the photo shoot, Fawcett and her co-star Jacqueline Smith stood up for themselves and their personal time. They locked themselves in a trailer with their other co-star, Kate Jackson, and enjoyed their lunch together for 45 minutes before finally agreeing to the photo shoot in the last 15 minutes of their lunch hour. This experience became a cherished memory for the three friends. Move for him. I mean, if you so much as bat an eyelash, you are going to find yourself on a menu. Robert Reed, known for playing the father on the original Brady Bunch show, was no stranger to conflict. He often had disagreements with the series creator and producer Sherwood Schwartz. Reed's criticisms were usually valid, leading Schwartz to keep him on the show despite the frequent tension. Susan Olson, who played the youngest Brady daughter, Cindy, has quite the impressive resume. She has portrayed the same character in five different series, including the original Brady Bunch and its Variety Hour spin-off. Milton Berle, a guest star on The Variety Show, was infamous for his habit of stealing jokes. This behavior often rubbed his fellow performers the wrong way. One notable interaction between Burl and Groucho Marx involved Burl admitting to stealing jokes from Marx, who quickly retorted, then you weren't listening. Burl's nickname, the Thief of Bad Gags, speaks volumes about his reputation. You? <laughs> Rental agent? Oh, look, I meant to tell you about it. Greg, don't dilly-dally about this. Now someone... After finding success in the Los Angeles-based dance group, The Lockers, Fred Berry made an appearance in the variety show. On the other hand, Tony Randall, known for his role in The Odd Couple, won an Emmy Award for the series even after its cancellation. During his acceptance speech, he humorously remarked, Thank you. Now, if I only had a job. Donny Osmond, another cast member, made his television debut at a young age of six on The Andy Williams Show back in 1963. In the world of 1970s television, one variety show stood out from the rest, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. The show featured many notable guests, one of whom was Paul Williams, a talented singer-songwriter. Williams' hit song Rainy Days and Mondays was originally intended for the fifth dimension, but they passed on it, and the song ultimately went to the Carpenters. Another guest on the show was Vincent Price, a well-known actor, and a winner of 32,000 in an appearance on the game, show the 64,000 question in 1955. Marie Osmond, a popular singer and actress, was also a part of the show. She was born on her father's 42nd birthday, and the story goes that George Osmond had to take a long walk on the hospital grounds, so overwhelmed learning that he had a daughter after having fathered seven sons. In summary, the Brady Bunch Variety Hour featured a diverse range of guests, each with their unique story. From Paul Williams' iconic song to Vincent Price's game show winnings, and Marie Osmond's memorable birth story, the show offered a little bit of everything for its viewers. Because there's a man out there holding a card that says, <laughs> well, I guess that brings us to the end of tonight's show. In the mid-1970s, Vincent Price attended a screening of Aladdin, which left him thoroughly entertained. However, he also felt a twinge of sadness, anticipating that his upcoming film, The Thief and the Cobbler, might face unfair criticism when compared to Disney's animated hit. Susan Olsen, known for her role as Cindy Brady, underwent surgery to rectify the lisp that had captured the hearts of countless television enthusiasts. Meanwhile, another actress associated with the same show, Jerry Rachel, earned herself the nickname Fake Jan. Airing on networks such as Nick at Night and TV Land during the 90s, promotional materials featuring Rachel were met with much humor and curiosity. She gracefully embraces this unique label even today. There's nowhere in the world that I would rather be did the Brady Bunch TV series leave a lasting impression on you? For many, this show was a beloved part of their childhood. The Brady Bunch Variety Hour, a spin-off of the original series, brought even more laughter and music to our screens. Perhaps you found yourself singing along to the catchy tunes, or maybe you were struck by the colorful costumes and sets. Whatever your experience, there's no denying that the Brady Bunch left its mark on the world of television. Did this show influence your perspective on cinema? Maybe you were inspired to explore more variety shows, or perhaps you found a new appreciation for musical television. 
Whatever your memories, we'd love to hear from you. Share your stories and experiences with us. Let's reminisce about this piece of television history together. And if you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the enduring impact of the Brady Bunch. What I'm going to say, I'm going to say in a very calm way, with complete object.